This is a Real Ghost Stories Online Extra. Hey, Tony. My name is uh, my name's Keegan. I'm from Ontario. I've been a long-time listener of the show, and I've, uh, I've been, been itching to share my story for, for stories for a couple of years now. Um, I've got three, three pretty good ones, um, and I'll, uh, I'll try and get through them quickly. So um, I'm from Ontario, Canada, but I, I lived in England until I was about uh, eight or nine years old. And uh, we lived in a very old farmhouse that was originally built in uh, in the early 1400s. The, the the living room of the house would have been the original cottage where the the original owners leaned and slept, uh, all in one little room. And then over you know the following centuries, they uh, they added onto the house. And by the time we lived in there, it was about 7,000 square feet. It was a massive home, and it was a it was a historical property called uh called Range Farm in Vila, England, just outside of Norwich. So we lived there from the time I was about two years old till about six years old. I might have been three. Anyhow, my parents uh would put me to bed every night and they would hear, you know, running around and giggling and they'd go up and I wouldn't have moved. I'd be in the same place. And this happened every single night. Um, every night they would hear the giggling, they would hear the running around in my bedroom and all around the upper floor of the house. Some nights it would sound like, you know, one child's footsteps and some, some nights it would sound like a, like a stampede of children. And, uh, you know, by, by the end of it, they just stopped looking, they stopped checking. They, they knew that whatever it was, uh, it, it wasn't me. Uh, and my parents have a slew of other stories that uh, that they need to call in and, and tell about that farmhouse. Um, from my experience in that farmhouse, I don't I don't remember any of this, any children playing with me in the room. I used to tell them that I had friends that I would talk to, and I don't remember any of this. My only memory from the farmhouse was uh, was just the feeling of being chased up and down the stairs. And I remember I would run to the bathroom and back, and I would get spooked, and I spent many nights you know, sleeping in bed with my parents, like I think a lot of toddlers and, and young children do. Um, fast forward about 10 years later, I'm 13 or 14. We're, we're living in Canada at this point. We're on vacation in uh, in Florida. Uh, we're, we're staying in a hotel on an island called Singer Island, which is just outside of West Palm Beach. And, uh, and uh, we're there. I felt really nervous. I, I felt uneasy. I didn't feel... I didn't feel good. I felt like I was being watched. I would hear footsteps, bare feet on the tile floor. It was very distinctive. And, uh, you know, I heard this. We were there for seven days, and I heard this for the first three or four nights. My parents heard it, too. Um, but we were in, you know, separate bedrooms, and, and you know, it was, uh, it, was, it was pretty freaky. Now, um, on the third or fourth day, while we were staying there, I uh, I was up alone in the room, Snapchatting your 14 year old does, and I was sitting with my back to the window, which oversees the beach, the ocean, and in front of me there was a wall with no TV, no photo on it, about six feet away from where I was sitting. It was kind of like uh, like a foyer area. You walked in, you took your shoes off there and whatnot, and uh, and then you entered the rest of the the condo or the the, uh, the hotel room. So as I'm taking Snapchats and whatnot, I, I, I sent a Snapchat to my cousin and a few friends of me holding a pair of binoculars up to my face. And uh, I sent it to about four or five people with a selfie with the binoculars uh, up to my face and the window behind me. Somebody screenshotted it and sent it back to me. In the lens of the binoculars was a face and not a misty classic you know apparition that you 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 typically see it was a a face as clear as day and there were three reflections of the face there was a reflection in the binoculars because of the lens of the binoculars the face appeared upside down but in the mirror in the the window behind me the face was clear as i mean you could make it out it looked like a hispanic Lady, it looked like she was wearing a collar, like a maid's outfit. Her hair was up. I mean, it's clear as day. It looked like a, like a headshot. Um, because of the window and the, the, the glare on the binoculars, we couldn't 
the color was a little bit distorted, but I believe whatever was in front of me that I couldn't see was a full solid apparition for just a split second. So like anyone would, I panic and I head downstairs, go to the, the pool bar where my parents were, and I, I start sharing the photo with people around it. Next thing you know, there's this big, you know, all the staff wants to see the photo. Now everyone's gathered around us telling stories. Turns out the Salal has all sorts of stories of seeing a Hispanic maid, woman, walking down the hallways. There were even stories of her greeting herself in a, in a Spanish accent. And then, you know, it would dawn on the employee, I've never met that woman before, or I've never seen her before. And they'd go looking for her, and they never found her. Now, this happened for, for years, years and years that this hotel had been, uh, you know, it was about a, it was pretty old. It was probably 80, 90 years old at the time. I'd like to know, I'd like to know for certain how old it was, but they all, uh, they all shared stories with us. So it was certain that there was some activity going on, and I wasn't the first to notice it. So obviously, I'm pretty freaked out. I don't want to sleep in my room anymore. So I'm sleeping on the couch just outside of my parents' room. Keep in mind, I'm about 14, 15 years old. I'm a little too old to be scared. I was scared shitless. And activity increased tenfold. Every night, my parents would hear it. We would hear it. There was a fan above the, the, the microwave that would go off. We would hear the feet on the, on the tile floor, a very distinct sound. We would hear the jiggling of our sliding door. We would hear doors opening and closing. This was a condo type unit. It was two bedrooms, two bathrooms, and a living room and a, and a front foyer. It was a pretty big unit. And, uh, and we heard this for the, for, the, for the next three days. It was so bad that I was sleeping on the floor of my parents' room. And the one thing that, this, that would happen almost every night was there's a fan underneath the microwave because the microwave is under the stove. So like a, a, a stove top fan in our kitchen there in the condo. And uh, this fan would go off every single night. Now, the interesting thing about this fan is there was one button. You click it once, it goes to the first setting. You click it twice, it goes to the second setting. You click it three times, it goes to the strongest setting. And then you click it a fourth time, and it shuts off. Which means whatever it was that was turning on this fan would have had to have hit the button three times. Because whenever we went out to turn the fan off, it was at its highest setting. We had uh, maintenance come take a look at the fan. They couldn't figure it out. It only happened in the middle of the night. And it would almost always happen when at least one of us was awake. We noticed that as well. We never woke up to the sound of the fan. We woke up to some weird noises in our unit, and then the fan would turn on. And we would hear the three clicks of the button as the fan, uh, you know, um, escalated its, its mode. Um, so that was pretty freaky. We left there with, with a ton of stories. I'm going to send you a DM on Instagram so you can have the photo for yourself. And you can take a look at it. It's it's very eerie. If you want access to more Real Ghost Stories, become a premium subscriber to Real Ghost Stories online. Sign up now through Apple Podcasts and try it for three days free. Not on Apple? Go to patreon.com slash realghoststories or ghostpodcast.com.